Hi there! In this section we're taking a look at arrays in Java. Arrays are used to store multiple values of the same data type, so they're another type of variable. We're going to take a look at declaring, creating and assigning values to one-dimensional arrays. We're going to look at getting the length of an array, traversing a one-dimensional array using a loop so that we can visit each index in the array, declaring, creating and assigning values to a two-dimensional array, and then finally traversing a two-dimensional array. So let's get started. First let's take a look at a one-dimensional array that would hold integers. So we mentioned that arrays are variables that can contain one or more values of the same data type. The key here is that all of those values have to be the same data type. They can all be integers, they can all be strings, they can all be ch characters, they can all be doubles, but they must all be the same. So in this first example we're going to take a look at declaring a one-dimensional array of integers called R. R is the name I've given the array in this particular example, but we could name it whatever we want. To declare a one-dimensional array of integers, it looks like we're just declaring a regular integer variable. We use the keyword int, and then the name of our variable, which in this case is R. But in, to denote that it's an array, we put two square brackets after it. So there's no space between the square brackets, just an open and closed square bracket and then your semicolon. And that tells Java that this is not just a regular variable, but it's an array. So it's going to hold more than one integer value. So we get our box and it's labeled R. And you'll see it's a longer box this time because there's going to be space in there for more than one piece of information. To create this array of integers then, because it's not completely done until we create it. So to create this array of integers, Again, it's still called R, but we're going, we have to give it a size. And in this instance, we're going to say it can hold five values. So we say R equals new int, and this time in the square brackets, we put the size. So in this instance, the size is five. So we declare a one-dimensional array by adding in the empty square brackets. And then to create it, R is a new int of size five, and the five goes in the square brackets. And what that does is it divides our box up into five sections. Each value or each section gets its own index, so it looks kind of like the strings that we looked at in a, in a previous section. So we have this one array called R with indexes 0 through to 4 because it's got five spaces. It's going to hold five values, all of which need to be integers. Suppose we wanted to assign the number 9 to the first index of that array. So we want to put a number 9 in where that 0 is. The code for that is r0 equals 9. So here we're using r, which is the name of the variable. If it was just a regular variable, we would just say r equals 9. But because it's an array, we put the index in the square brackets, and then we assign the value 9. And what that does is it takes our 9, and it pops it in index 0 of that array named r. So. Let's take a look at another example, this time using strings, because we've said already arrays can hold any sort of data, so long as all the different values that are in one array are of the same data type. So if we'd want to declare a one-dimensional array of strings called words, okay, again, words is just the name I've given it. The code to declare this is string words followed by square brackets. So again, it looks like we're just declaring a normal string called words, but we're adding on these square brackets to show it's going to be an array of strings. That makes our box labeled words. Then we need to create that array of strings, and in this case we're going to give it a size of 3. You can make it any size you want. Words equals new string, and in the square brackets we put the size 3. And what that does is it takes our words array and it divides it into three spaces. Each word gets its own index, so 0, 1, 2, Okay, and now let's assign the word hello to the first index in the array. So we need to put the string hello into the first index in this particular array. So again, it's going to be the name of the array, which is words, the index we want it to go into, which is zero, equals, and then our string. And in this instance, our string has quotation marks, whereas in the previous example, we were working with integers, so we didn't have any quotation marks. So hello goes in quotation marks, and that pops hello inside index 0 of the words array. 
So that's how we declare and create and assign values to arrays, whether it's an array of integers, an array of strings, an array of doubles. The only thing that changes is the data type. What is possible, though, is for us to declare, create, and initialize an array all in one go, if we know from the outset what all the values are that are going to be stored in the array. So let's take a look at declaring, creating, and assigning all in one line of code. If we're asked to declare and create an array of integers of size 3, named nums for numbers, and assign the values 9, 8, and 7 to the array. We know from the outset 9, 8, and 7 are going to be the contents of the array, so we can do it like this. We can say int nums square brackets to show that nums is in fact an array, then equals, and after the equal sign, we have our open curly brackets and each of the values that gets stored in the array in the order in which we want it stored gets put in the curly brackets separated by a comma. So we have 9, 8, 7. And that's going to create an array labeled nums, index is 0, 1, 2. So again, the indexes always start at 0 in an array, like when we did strings. And here we already have the values assigned to the array. Similarly, we can take a look at an example for an array of strings. Declare and create an array of strings of size 2, named answers, and assign the values yes and no to the array. So the code for that then is going to be string answers, square brackets to show that answers is in fact an array. And then after the equal sign, we list our values that we want to store in the array between the curly brackets, each separated by a comma. So we have yes comma no. Again, because we're dealing with strings here, we've used quotation marks, but dealing with the integer example previously, we didn't have quotation marks. That's just because one's a string and one's an integer. There's nothing more to it than that. So you'll see there now, we have our string, our string array called answers, and in index 0 we have yes, and in index 1 we have no. So let's take a look at a coded example. Let's see if we were asked to develop an application that asks the user to enter the exam results of five students and store them in an array. The application should then print the contents of the first and last indexes of the array to the user. So we're simply going to make an application that asks the user for input five times and takes each of those values and puts them into an array. And then we print the contents of the first and last index of the array to the user. So let's take a look at TextPad and see how we might tackle this. Okay, so here we are in TextPad, and I've already opened a new file and saved it as results1app.java. So again, we're just doing this example using an app class rather than complicate things with an instantiable class, just so we can see how the arrays work. I've already used my comment. At okay, so here you can see I've opened a new file in TextPad and I've saved it as results1app.java. I've also got my comment here at the top of the file and I'm going to just do this as an app class rather than get bogged down in the detail of an instantiable class just yet so that we can see what the um, purpose of the array is. So we'll start with our class header public class results one app public static void main string args and then I declare my array so int r semicolon don't forget my square brackets okay so I've declared my array I want to create my array then r equals new int and in the square brackets I put the size and we're doing five exam results and then our semicolon at the end I'm going to ask the user for input. I'm going to ask them to input five different values. So we import Java X dot swing dot J option pane. Okay. Now there's a number of ways I can do this. Okay. I want to assign, I suppose we want to just read one value from the user and we'll put it into the first space in the array. We say r0 equals j option pane dot show input dialog null comma 
enter a result. Okay, obviously we're reading in integers, so we have to take this and we have to integer dot parse int open around bracket at the end then close the round bracket. So we're parsing what we read in from the user and we store it in the first space in the array. Okay, but I want to do this five times. And rather than say r1 equals integer.parsint, blah, 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 r2 equals integer.parsint, blah, 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 I don't want to repeat myself over and over again. If I'm going to find myself repeating myself in a program, I use a for loop. So for int i equals, and in this case, our i, our counter, is going to refer to the index in the array. So we initialize i to 0, which is the first index in the array. We continue while i is less than 5, which is the last index in the array, and we increment i, i plus plus, or i equals i plus 1, whichever suits. Inside the array then, we read in a value from the user, and we store it in r i. So that first time through the loop it goes into 0, second time through the loop it goes into 1, third time it goes into 2, and so on and so forth. After I've read in the value, I close my loop. So I have read in five results from the user and the program asked me to print the, co the contents of the first index and the last index of the array. So j option pane dot show message dialog null the first result is and I want to display the contents of the index 0 in R. So R square bracket 0 square bracket. And then the same again, J option pane dot show message dialog null comma the last result is plus R square bracket. Now the last index, even though the size is 5, remember the last index in this particular array is going to be 4. Then we close our curly bracket for our main method and close our curly bracket for our class. Control and 1 to compile and we've completed successfully. So Control and 2 will run. Please enter a result. 2, enter a result. 5, 6, 9, 10. The first result is 2. The last result is 10. OK, so that application allows the user to enter five numbers and then prints the first and last results stored in the array. Now, in this particular example, we knew that the size of the array was five and that the user was indeed going to enter five different values. OK, but supposing we didn't know how many values the user had entered into the array. And so we didn't know exactly how many times we needed to loop around at the start of the program. Well, what we can do there is we can use the length method. So that's what we're going to take a look at in the next section.